Hi, welcome to the React 0 to 60 tutorial. In this video, we'll briefly learn about what React is, what it's used for, and why it's so popular. And then we'll create an app that includes the essential modern features of React. So what is React? Created and maintained by Facebook, React is a front-end library for building component-based single-page applications. The package of React itself is a library and not a framework, meaning that it aims to give you a set of tools to use, which are utilities for creating components and managing them, but it is not opinionated, meaning that it doesn't tell you how to use these tools. It doesn't enforce a specific way of structuring your project code base. React is component-based. We can use it to create simple, separate, independent components that form pieces of a complex user interface usually a web page, but we can also create mobile apps or even desktop apps using um, React with other tools. Each of these components holds its own markup, stores the logic it needs, and maintains its own state if needed. React components are either a JavaScript class, aka a class-based component, which are a, a class that has a state that manages the data that the component uses and can use lifecycle methods that occur at different points in time during the lifespan of the component. These methods can be uh, used to perform side effects when needed. For example, um, fetching data if when the component is created or updating parts of the component when some event is triggered or any other side effect really. A component can also be a function, aka a functional component. While technically these components are stateless, and are only used to process some basic logic and display some markup. But since version 16.8, with the release of hooks, we can store and manipulate data in functional components in a way that's practically identical to class components. I have a mini series on React hooks on this channel if you wanna dive deeper into that, but we will be using hooks in this tutorial. React is all about JavaScript. Now, of course you can use it with TypeScript, but that's basically JavaScript with some extra features. On top of components being uh, plain JavaScript classes or functions, the markup itself is closer to JavaScript than it is to HTML. Well, at least according to React. It's written to, uh, as J JSX. JSX is a syntax extension to JavaScript that allows us to leverage JS features and return any type of dynamic markup. Kind of similar to PHP if you've worked with that. My honest opinion about JSX is that it's a little bit annoying to get used to at the beginning, especially with having to write HTML attributes in camel case. The biggest one, of course, is having to write class name instead of class. But once you get used to it, it's actually quite powerful when it comes to manipulating markup and performing any type of update on your DOM. React uses a virtual DOM in the background and constantly compares versions of the uh, DOM with the actual DOM to determine which parts to update, giving it a huge performance boost and the library itself is minuscule in size, which makes updates that you do in, to your code compile extremely fast, which prevents a lot of downtime during development and produces a tiny bundle size in production. One of the biggest reasons why React is my personal favorite UI library is that it's the most popular one out there. This reason sounds silly at first, but because it is the most popular, there are tons of tools and libraries developed every day for React to achieve any functionality you might need for your projects. Plus, it's got an amazing, vibrant community that discusses, criticizes, and codes new things with the framework every single day. Seriously, there's tons of material and blog posts about any topic related to React. Plus, of course, there are lots of jobs if you know how to use React. Now. To get started with React, you gotta have Node.js installed and npm or yarn installed. Using either of those, install um, create react app, which is the command tool that we'll use to generate our app. It's a brilliant tool that lets us easily create a React app that uh, is set up to use ES6 along with a Webpack dev server and many other things. You can configure a setup like this yourself, but why reinvent the wheel? Like I said in my Angular and Vue tutorials, you have to be comfortable writing JavaScript before you learn any JavaScript framework. And you have to be comfortable with using ES6 syntax and language features like uh, data types, loops, conditionals, async features, mainly promises, and higher order functions like map, sort, and filter. So if you say, hey, my JavaScript is actually pretty good, then I say, this tutorial is indeed for you. All right, enough of the theory and let's get to the code. 
Before we start, I just wanted to tell you that we'll be using this API that I created a while ago as part of a uh, AWS Lambda and DynamoDB tutorial. Uh, it's a basic CRUD API. So basically we have, I'll put a link in the description for the base URL of the API and to the video as well if you wanna do that API. Uh, if not, of course, you can just follow along. This link would be in the description. So basically we have a couple of routes. Uh, we have the main one slash posts uh, the get uh, as a get request, you send it and you get a list of posts listed by, um, sorted by the created ad. And you can as well post, of course, uh, to slash post as a post request. If I send this with a title and a body, I get a response that this was created and I get that post back. And of course I can take the ID and go send a request to slash post slash that ID as a put request and with new data, title and body, and that post will be edited. And we can delete as well and we can request any number of posts. We can limit, for example, let's say to three. So we say slash post slash three, I get a request again, and we only get three back. All right, so the, we'll use this to demonstrate to you how uh, to consume a CRUD API using React. All right, so here on my desktop, I'm gonna open up a terminal window. I'll make sure that we have um, create React app installed. So by running create React app dash dash version. So I have version three installed, make sure you have it installed. If you do, you can just run create React app. I'll call this uh, React starter. So this is now uh, is gonna like install React and get all the ba uh, the basic dependencies and scaffold all the uh, boilerplate for us. So this is gonna take a while, so I'll be back once it's done. All right, now that it's done installing, I'll right click the folder and open it using VS Code. So this is what we get. We get a couple of files, amongst them a package JSON, which is standard for any NPM based project. We get our dependencies and we get a couple of scripts. Mainly we'll use the start script to start the development server on port 3000. And we have the build script, which builds all our static assets to the build folder in the root directory. So here we have our source folder. This is all our uh, where our code is. So starting with the index.js file. So here we import React and React DOM, and we import our index.css, which is where we store our global styles, and the app from app.js, which we'll get to in a second. And then we render that app in instead of this element that has the ID of root, uh, which is right here. If we go to public index.html, it's this one right here. So this div will get replaced by our entire app. And by the way, we can change the title of document here. Let's say React tutorial, just for the fun of it. And let's close this. Let's close the index.js, the index.css, and let's go to the app.js. So this is where everything meets in our application. This is the first file that's executed when our app starts. So let's actually start our app and see what it looks like. So I'll open up a integrated terminal and say npm start. This will now compile our application and start it on port 3000. So this is our app, nothing fancy, just the spinning logo. Uh, let's start to actually write our own markup. All right, so here I'm gonna delete everything inside of this tag. In fact, I'm gonna remove all of this. I'm not gonna be using the app CSS styling, everything here. Actually, I'll delete this index CSS. Let's go to index.js, remove the import because this file doesn't exist. I only keep the uh, app CSS. Um, let's clean up a bit. I'll remove this logo because we're not going to use it. So in the app, I'll remove the import for the logo because we don't use that anymore. I'll keep the app CSS. Here for now, I'll just have a div that has a header one saying React app. So let's save. Let's save all files. Make sure the is still running. And it is. And if you go to it, it says just React app. All right, for this tutorial, I wanna use materialized CSS to style our application using Google Material Design Standards. So let's go to materializedcss.com, go to get started, and I'll install it using npm. So I'll copy this uh, command from here. And let's go to the terminal, I'll, I'll cancel this, and then I'll paste uh, that command. So I'll let it install materialized CSS. And uh, before it finishes installing, I'm actually gonna link them here. So I'll say, uh, I'll link both the CSS and the JavaScript. We can link it in the index HTML, but it's better to do it here in the JavaScript. Uh, of course, there is um, Babel 
in the background and uh, it knows when we import a CSS or uh, to a JavaScript file to actually include it in the HTML. So this looks a bit funny that we're importing CSS to JavaScript, but it works uh, just fine behind the scenes. So here we'll go back one level, we'll say import, go back one level to node modules slash materialize CSS slash dist slash CSS slash materialize uh, dot min dot CSS. Now we can copy this and paste it one more time and replace here with JavaScript JS and replace here dot min dot JS to uh, import the JavaScript files. And here let's cut this uh, import of our global style and make sure we paste it after this. So whenever we want to override some styles here, um, make sure that we have this, our custom CSS is always the latest one to override any styles. All right, so off the go, I'm gonna install the router to set up multiple routes to show you how the router works. So I'll run npm install react router dom like this. And I'll also install something called Axios, which we'll use to send HTTP requests. We can use uh, the built-in fetch API, which comes with JavaScript, but Axios just is a bit better, offers us a couple of more features. All right, so now that they're done installing, we can, here in the app.js, we can import the router. So let's say import router, and uh, we need to import route to set up multiple routes from react router, react-router-dom, like this. Uh, now I'm gonna have two pages in this app. So let's create, I'm gonna create two folders here, one called pages and one called components. Let me close this here. So the idea is that uh, the main pages will be in this pages folder and the components will hold pieces of the pages. So here in the pages, I'll create two files, one called about.js and one called home.js. So I'm only creating this about uh, page just to demonstrate to you how uh, the router works. Um, otherwise, it's just going to be a page with a title. And here in the components, I'm going to create a navbar.js, which where, uh, where we will put our navbar. We'll have a navbar at the top of the page. So I'll go to the documentation of materialized CSS, go to components, and here in navbar, let's grab this nav tag. So copy this, all of this, and let's go to our navbar.js. Here we'll say, um, by the way, you can install this really cool um, VS Code extension. Uh, it's right here called ES7 React Redux. This one right here gives you a lot of really cool, uh, useful uh, snippets to use when developing a React app. So using this uh, extension, so where's our component? Let me close this. I'm gonna say RFC for React Functional Component and tab, so and it's gonna create all of this. So inside of here, we're in the return, and by the way, so this is our basic functional component. It needs to return something uh, here. And this is our markup. It's returned in this markup. And in this case, it's our navbar. We'll leave it like this for uh, for the second, but we'll come back to it. Let's go back to our app.js. And um, here, let's import our pages. So here, let's say import um, about, I'll put it as a capital, uh, about from uh, the same directory pages slash about like this and here we'll say import we can just copy this paste it select here and control d and say home actually i'll put this capital h components inside of markup should always be um pascal cased and here as well i'll get the navbar so navbar from components slash navbar like this and um, the uh, I'm using this convention that uh, pages start with a lowercase and components start with an uppercase, but the naming of the files doesn't matter that much. Uh, as long as you have a, a, um, a convention that suits you and you stick to it, that's fine. All right, so here we need to use the router to route between these two pages. So here, in, inside of here, inside of our return, I'll say router like this, tab, 
and here we'll uh, the idea is that to have the navbar at the top and whatever that's under the navbar when we click on a page we go to that page but the navbar always remains at the top of the page so here we'll say uh, navbar like this navbar and we close the tag and here I'll put a container div to push everything in like this and here we need to put our routes so we'll put our first route we'll say route and I'll say exact so that it matches with this exact path I'll say path equals and we'll give it a path which is gonna be the slash because this is gonna be the home page and it takes a component attribute and this will be or prop and this will be the home component or the home page so here I'll put home which is this home right here so I'll copy this one more time and this will be the about page so this will go to slash about and the component will be about now if we save this and we run npm start it's it's gonna we're gonna have an error because these don't have anything yet so in the home it's gonna have an error so in the home, I'll say RFC tab, and it creates all of this. Uh, by the way, I prefer the syntax where we export afterwards. It doesn't really matter, but it looks cleaner in my opinion. So here we'll say export default home. We can leave this as a function like this, but we can also use an arrow function and say, uh, store it in a const variable and say const home equals, and do brackets like this. And here it can take props, um, which I'll explain in a second. So we can use the syntax as well. So here in the home, or well actually it compiled without any errors for some reason. Hmm. Oh, because uh, we can't go to these routes yet. Yeah, if you if we do, it's gonna yeah. We don't have those pages. Oh, so let's populate these pages. So here in the about again, I'll say RFC, and inside of here, I'll just have a header two that says about page. And in the nav, uh, in the home, I'll have a header to, and it will say the home home page like this. All right, so let's save all files. All right, let's look at our app. Okay, let's look at our app here. Oh, this should be. Oh, this is the the actual export is browser router, browser router. Um, but I'll label it so I'll say as router so we can use it as. Um, with this as router like this so that was why we had the error all right so there we go we get our home page and if we go to slash about we get our about page and the navbar is always there all right so let's change these buttons because these are just static buttons now they don't go anywhere so let's go to our navbar I'm gonna close this terminal it's taking up unnecessary space and here we need to uh, change these anchor tags with actual links to our pages and we're gonna need something called link so we'll say import link from react router dom and here inside of the nav we'll have our brand and it's gonna be it's not gonna say logo it's gonna say react uh, starter or anything you want it to say and we'll change this from an anchor tag to um, to a link so we'll say link and instead of href we'll say two and we'll give it just slash because this will hold, go to the home page and here we'll change the closing tag to link as well and here we'll change these to link so link like this so this will be the home to the home page we'll say home right here and here we'll have a um, two attribute and this will go to slash so I'll copy this link and paste it instead of this and this will be to the about so about and this will go to slash about and I'll remove this third one because we don't have three pages and I'll wrap everything inside of here in a container so that it pushes it in the middle as well so here we'll say div dot container and then I'll copy all of this stuff and paste it inside of here I'll save and it formats and by the way this is auto formatting because I have an extension called prettier if you're wondering so let's go to our app and there we go we get home and about if I click on about well it was already there but if I click on home we go to home and the URL changes as well and the about and if I click this uh, brand we go back to the home page all right cool so let's actually start to populate our pages let's start with the about page because it's the simple one uh, I want to change this to a class based component just to show you how they work. So here we can say class about extends 
and we need to import uh, from react we can say react.component but we can as well say like this we can import component as well and say that this extends component and now this is a class based component and here we let's cut this and we need to have a render method and inside the render method we return our markup like this so this is a class based component you can actually have a constructor like any re like javascript class here we can call the super to extend the parent class and we can have a state we can say this dot state equals uh, there's no actual use case in in here but i'm just demonstrating to you how it works we can have some variables here we can have a title let's call this page title and you will say the about page and we can place that title inside of here dynamically by just doing curly braces and saying this dot state dot page title and if we save and we look at our app okay it doesn't contain a default export yeah because i need to say export default about like this and save and we go to our app. So now in the about page, it says the about page. And we can use, use as well um, lifecycle methods to change stuff. We can say component did mount, which executes after the component mounts. And we can change as well stuff in the state by saying this dot set state. So I want to change the page title and let's change it back to just about page. And we should straight away, once this page loads, we see about page without seeing the about page. All right, so I'll leave this like this. And by the way, class-based components can be within functional components and functional components can be within class-based components. So you don't have to worry about that. You can use them uh, together. All right, so I'll close this and let's go to the home page. And here, what I wanna show is, I wanna show a list of all the posts from our API and uh, put a form at the top to create new posts and buttons as well to delete and edit these posts. Let's start by showing all the posts. So here in the home page, I will leave this uh, wrapping div because uh, what you return, uh, the markup you return needs to be one HTML element. And inside of here, we can say dot row. I wanna uh, put stuff in a row because that's um, materialized stuff. And here I'll have a column. Um, this will be uh, of uh, dot called s6 and by the way this materialized stuff for it to take half the width of the um, of the the entire parent div and here i want to display each post in a um, in a card uh, the way we do that we need to obtain these posts first and iterate through them so we need to obtain them first from using our api so using Axios, okay, we need to import Axios in this component. We'll say import Axios from Axios. And uh, I wanna set something first. I wanna set the base URL so that we don't have to type it each time. So here I'll say, I'll import Axios in the app.js. So import Axios from Axios. And here once the app starts, I'll say axios.defaults.base url equals the url of our base um the base url of our api which is again in the description of this video so i'll save this and go back to the home i'll import two more things from react so here i'll put a comma and uh, import two hooks first one will be the use effect hook and the second will be the use um state hook and uh, i'll explain what they do in a second so first we want to uh initialize a posts array so here we'll say const and i'll say uh, an array like this posts um and set posts and we'll say u equals use state and pass it an empty array so what this does is that this is called array destructuring use state uh, lets us um, access um, this use state hook and create uh, a state variable that's actually managed in the background by react and we give it an initial uh, an initial um, value which is an empty array so now this posts the first value of it will be this empty array and this set posts method or function will let us um, change the value of the posts so we will store our posts here once we get them so let's actually get them here i'm going to use the other hook the use effect hook um, and i'll say use effect which takes a callback, so the effect, 
uh, in our, uh, I'll put it in an arrow function. And here I'll say, um, so here we will reach to our backend and get our post. So I'll say axios, um, oops, axios dot get, and this will be to slash posts, if you remember from our API. So this returns a promise, so I'll say dot then, and I'll get a result from that request. And if we get here, that means we've been successful and we got our data. So here we need to set our posts. So I'll say set posts and I'll pass it. And the way uh, Axios works is that it stores the data you'll get in a uh, data object inside of the result. So I'll say set posts res.data. And I'll also console log it just to make sure that we got our proper data. So I'll say console log res.data. And this is a promise. So we need to say dot catch in case an error happens. Error. And we'll say console dot error that error. All right. So the way use effect works is that you will execute once the component is um, created before the first render, and then it will keep executing each time the state, um, the props change, uh, or anything that you give it in the second argument changes. So here, the second argument depths, which is dependencies, is a, a, a set of um, of things that you give it to use effect and you say, okay, if any of these change, then execute again. In this case, I don't want it to execute again. I only want to fetch the posts once. So I will give it an empty array, which means it will only execute once. All right, so now that we got our posts, once our component is mounted, we will get our posts and they'll be stored here. Let's actually show them on our um, markup. So here inside of the row, um, this and whatever is inside of it represents one post. So we will wrap this, we will say, we'll put curly braces to put the JavaScript expression. I'll say posts to refer to this posts variable dot map. And for each post, we will return the following. So we'll do parentheses. And by the way, by the way, we can do curly braces and then inside of there say re return, but we don't need to write any logic inside of there. So shorthand will be just parentheses and this will mean return the following. So I'll cut this from here and paste it inside of the um, of this. And inside of here, don't worry about the formatting, it will format when I save. I'll say dot card which is material um, materialized stuff again. And inside of the card, we'll have another div with the class of card title tab. And here we'll put the title of the post. So curly brace to use variable, to use JavaScript expressions. And now we have access to this post variable. And uh, from the API, uh, we each post has a title. So I'll say post dot title. So we'll display it here. I'll do another, uh, so under the title, I'll do a paragraph dot timestamp. So it will give it the class. And by the way, uh, without using Emmet, you can as well say, let's say a uh, paragraph and give it a class. Just make sure you don't say class equals, you say class name like this. But even if you do, if you open up your console, uh, React will complain about it and it will prompt you to fix it. So inside of the timestamp, we want to put the created at of the post. So here I'll say post dot created at, and under here, I'm going to put another paragraph and here I'll just say post dot body and close this. And oh, actually all of this needs to be inside of card content. So let me cut, cut this, forgot to add that. So inside of here, we say card content and, and tag uh, tab and paste all of that uh, back in. And uh, under this card content, I'm going to put another div with the class of card action. And here we will put our buttons. We'll have two buttons. So I'll put a, um, an anchor tag. Uh, we will not, it's not going to go anywhere. So we'll give it this hash and here I'll say edit, and then I'll copy this. I'll put another one and call this delete. And here I'll give it a class name of delete button delete uh, dash btn because I want to style this separately and I want to give it a, a red color. So we can go to the global app CSS. And by the way, you can create um, a home.css file and link it here so that you will only style this component. For now, I'll use the global C uh, CSS file. I'll actually delete everything here. And here I'll say dot delete uh, btn. 
and I'll give this a color of red. Um, I'll give this important, even though it's not a best practice, but I'll just use this for now. This uh, this tutorial is not focused on CSS. I'm, I just want to make this red. All right, let's save all files. Go to our app. Okay, we get a React use state hook is called in a function, which is neither a React function or component. Okay, it's because this needs to be a capital home like this. Export default like this. And let's save. There we go. So we don't get our items and that's because, oh, well, actually we do, it just took a while. All right, so here it says invalid DOM property class. Did you mean class name? Okay, so I made a typo somewhere in navbar JS uh, line number nine. Yeah, so here this is class name instead of class. Actually, I'm going to select this and control or just alt and select this and select this as well and change all of them to class name. All right, so the error should be gone after I saved. But here it says each child in a list should have a unique key property. Yeah, so um, here when we iterate through um, any array, each child, uh, each direct child, so here I'll give the property key and this needs to be unique. So we know we have ID, so I'll say post.id, which is unique and I'll just save and that error is gone. And by the way, that console log of the data is right here. So we get all of our 10 posts right here. All right, cool. Let me make sure actually everything looks fine. Okay, um, I'm going to change a couple of things quickly. So I want this um, date to be closer to the title and in a gray color. So let's go here in the app CSS. Let me go back. So it's the undercard, card content, card title and timestamp. So here I'll say dot card and then dot card content dot card title. So I'm targeting just the title. I'll remove the margin underneath it to make the date go closer to it. So I'll say margin bottom zero and I'll copy this, paste it here. Instead of card title, I'll say p paragraph dot, uh, what is it, time stamp. And here I'll give it a, a gray color. So I'll say color hash nine nine, oops, nine nine nine, um, colon or semicolon, save. Let's look at it. All right, it looks better now. Or well, let's give it some margin bottom so that the paragraph uh, goes a bit further away from it. So margin bottom of uh, 12 pixels and let's save. All right, it looks much better. Okay, so let's go back to the home. Let's wire these two buttons. And for this, I'll create um, two uh, functions. So first, and uh, inside, even that we are inside a function, we can actually create other functions. That's uh, one of the cool things about JavaScript. So here we'll say function, and you can as well say const and create it as an arrow uh, function, it doesn't make a difference. Here I'll uh, create the first one, which is the edit post. This will take a post. And for now, I'll just console log. So I'll just say uh, console log uh, post. And the other one will be delete post function delete, oops, delete post. This will take the ID of the post. And now we need to reach to our server and actually delete this post. So I'll say axios dot delete. And we need to send the um, request to slash post slash the ID of this. So actually I need to make these back text to put a template string. And inside of here I'll say dollar sign curly brace and we need to put that ID here. And this returns a promise, so we say then. Uh, we don't need any results, so we keep those uh, the argument empty there. And here, now that it's deleted on the server, let's actually remove it from this post array here so we can reflect the change on our front end. So here what we need to say, uh, I'll say const posts updated equals posts dot, we'll use filter, and here our uh, callback our function will be post where post dot id or id does not equal this id. So this means keep only the the ones that don't have this id. In other uh, in other words, just remove the one that has this id. So you will remove that post. And now we need to set set posts and pass it this posts updated 
that we created. And I'm not going to chain dot catch because I know it's not going to fail. Uh, you can chain it if you want. I don't want to waste a lot of time on that. So let's save. Let's uh, attach these functions to our buttons. So here for the edit one, I'll say on click, which attaches an event of click. Whenever this button is clicked, it executes the following uh, function. And we'll do curly braces and we need to pass it our, uh, our edit post. Now, uh, we could say edit post like this and pass it this post from here. But the problem with this, uh, like this, it's going to actually call it the first time it renders the markup. So instead, we want to say edit post dot bind. And uh, the first argument doesn't matter. We can just say this or just null. And the second argument will be the post. And the second argument is actually going to be the first argument passed to edit post. So this way, it's just a reference to that method or function rather. So here, I'm just going to copy this and for the delete one, paste it and say delete, uh, delete post. And instead of post, we pass it the post.id. All right, let's save and let's go to our app, open the console, make sure there's no errors. There isn't. There's a warning that the href attributes need a value. I'm going to ignore that for now. So here, Let's send our uh, delete request to delete this post. So I click delete and there we go. So it's gone. Let's go back to our app. Oh, we'll do the edit actually. Let's click that. It just console logs that post. We will wire this later and actually put the functionality of the edit post. Let's now create the form that we'll use to submit posts to our server. So here, um, before this row, I'm going to add another row. So I'll say dot row tab. And here I'll, I'll add a column. So dot call dot s six again, and here we can put our entire form, but of course we can put this in its own component. So we will have smaller linear components. So here I'll say uh, post form like this, even though we haven't created it yet. And I'll go up here and import it. I'll say import uh, post form, oops, form from um, we go back one level, we go to components slash post form. Uh, let's create this. So here in the components, I'll say new file post form dot JS. And here I'll say RFC. And let's use the other syntax. So I'll just keep a function like this, cut this and say export default post form. Let's import uh, the use use state hook. And here I use a uh, loading boolean to um, to run um, to use. So here I'll say const array destructuring again loading and set loading. And here I'll say equals use state and the initial value will be false. And here inside I'll leave this div. And by the way, if you don't want a div soup, you, if you don't want too many divs, you can use. Um, so here I'll import another thing called fragment and you can use fragment instead of div which is just a wrapper which is not actually gonna um, render any HTML element it's just a wrapper that you use okay so inside of the fragment I'll put a um, div or actually I'll put a conditional so let's say an expression like this and I'll say not loading so if we're not loading I'll put a, a question mark so use a ternary oper operator. So if we're not loading, I want to show the form. So we do parentheses and we'll put the form right here. But if we are, I'll put here a col um, colon and put parentheses. I want to show a loading um, bar. So here I'll say dot progress, oops, progress. This is a um, material uh, materialize um, class. And here I'll say dot in determinate. This is uh, actually indeterminate like this. So materialize will replace this with a loading bar. And here we'll, we'll put our form. So here I'll say form. It's not going to have an action. And uh, I'll give it a class name of, um, what is I'll call this push in. I'll use this later for another class to give it some margin and push it in. And here we'll put our fields. So here I'll, I'll say dot input field, again, materialize CSS stuff. And here we'll, we'll have our first input. I'll put a label 
and this label will be for title. Um, notice that this is HTML4, not for, because this is a, a JSX attribute. So inside this label, it will say title. And this here will have an input with the type text. And I'll put a couple of other fields. We will have a name of a uh, title. We'll have a value. Uh, we'll come back to this uh, in a second. We'll have an on change. And uh, React doesn't have double binding, but we so we need to explicitly give an on change method that tells this input what to execute once this input is changed. And here we'll pass it an on change uh, function that we will create in a second. And here I'll give it a class name of uh, validate and then close it. Let's copy this one more time. And this will be the body of the post. So here will be the label is for body and the text inside the label will say body. The type will be text. The name will be body. The on change is the same and the class is the same. Now for these values, we're going to store a, another thing in the state. So here we'll say const, I'll call this the, uh, call this post and we'll have our setter will be set post and this will say use state and let's give our post an initial state. The initial state of our post, it will have a title that's empty and it will have a body that's empty as well. So now here in the value, I'll give this here post.title. And in the value of the body, I'll give this the value of post dot body like this. So initially they will start as an empty string and each time they change. So let's create this on change. Here we'll say, um, we can say const on change. So we're using the const um, uh, syntax now. I'll, this takes an event. So I'll say event. And here I'll say set post. And here, what I'm going to do is that the way set post it works is different to set state because set post, whatever I pass it here, it will completely override the post. So if I pass it just the title, it will actually set the title and remove the body. So instead I will use the spread operator and spread post, which means I'm going to spread the existing values and then change the value that's been edited now. So here I'll put a dynamic binding and said, say event dot target dot name as the name of the field, because this is stored in the, in the event. And remember, this is this name right here. So if I edit title, this will say title here, and then the value will be the value of this input. So I'll say the value will be event target dot value. And this will work for both of them. So here I'll uh, put a semicolon. And since this is a form, it needs a submit event. So here I'll say on submit another JSX attribute and we need to bind it to a function and I'll bind it to on submit, Oops, on submit and let's create this on submit. So I'll say const on submit. It will as well take an event. And here I'll say, uh, we need to prevent the default behavior. So we'll say event dot prevent default. This is just JavaScript to prevent the page from loading and to prevent it from putting our variables in the URL. And here I'll um, set the loading to true because we're gonna talk to our server. So I wanna set a, a loading spinner. So I'll set set loading to true. And here I wanna reach to our server. I'll say axios dot, oops. Um, yeah, we need to import it. Did it import it automatically? Yeah, it did. But I want it to be lowercase a right here. So axios dot uh, post. And we want to post to, so I'll put a, well, actually just slash post. So as a string slash post, and this takes a second parameter. This is going to be our post. So say post, and then we'll say dot then. Remember this post is this one right here. And when we type stuff, it actually changes and has actual values. So here we'll say dot then. When we get a result, let's do the following. And uh, what, um, for now, let's just console log. So CLG tab. Uh, and I'll say res.data to see what data we get back. And uh, here I'll chain it.catch error console.error. Oops, error that error. And of course, since this is a form, it needs a button, uh, a submit button. So here I'll, uh, under this div here, I'll say button with a type of submit. And here I'll give it some classes. So class name 
equals I'll give it waves effect oops effect and uh, waves light and btn just materialize css classes to give it the blue button inside the button it will say uh, add all right let's save all of this open the terminal see if we have any errors we don't just some warnings let's ignore those for now i'll go to the app and uh, we get some weird uh, closing tag here let me make sure everything is fine here yeah there's an extra closing tag here and here as well let's uh, save go back all right so we get our form let me give it that margin now actually so let's go to the app css so that was dot push in like this and we'll just give it margin uh, 50 pixels let's save cool it looks better like this all right so here let's say a uh, new post from the react app and i'll just say new react post body and click add all right, I didn't set the loading to false once we get a response back, but we get our console, uh, console log. And uh, we go to the network tab. So this is the request that we just sent. Um, so we get a response um, status of two, 201 created and we get our response back. So that post has been created. And if we reload and we fetch post again, you see that post has been created and there we go, we get it here. Let's actually reset our form once we so once we get a response so here we need to uh, right here we need to when we get a response we need to set the loading again to false so that we can see our form again instead of just the spinner and uh, one more thing because right now when the fields will stay uh, full actually let me demonstrate quickly so if we reload and if we do some gibberish right here and if we click add it does send it it, does, it doesn't show here because we're not adding it. It does send it, but these don't reset. We want to reset these fields to empty. So here, when we set the loading to false, let's before as well set post, and let's set it to this initial value. So let's set the fields to be empty again. Again, when we change these, this changes. And when this changes, it changes these. Now they are double bound, uh, two-way bound. So let's save, let's reload. That gibberish post has been created. Let's put another gibberish post here like this. Click add. It's loading and then it's empty. And that was added because if we reload, we see it here. And um, let's actually style this uh, spinner thing. I want it to be in the middle. I just give, I'm just going to give it some margin. So it's this progress thing here. So you can copy this. Go to the app CSS. Say dot progress. And I'll just give it some uh, margin top and bottom of 100 pixels and um, left and right of zero. So let's save. All right, is that right here? Let's put, let's reload, just make sure everything is fine. Put some gibberish. And there we go, the loading bar is in the middle. All right, so here, let's go back to our form. Let's add a way so that when we send our post to our server and when we get a response here, we actually add it to the home page in this list right here. So the way we can do this, we can create a function here in the home component. So here I'll create another function. Right here, I'll say function add uh, add post right here. It takes a post, and what it's gonna do is uh, it's simply gonna say um, uh, set posts. Or actually, uh, first I want to say const posts updated because I don't want to um, uh, straight away use the set post. And here we'll say. Uh, we'll put this post at the beginning and then put comma and spread our existing posts from here So now we just add it to that list and we simply say set posts posts updated Now we need to pass this function down to our post form component so that it can use it So here let's copy this and for this we can pass it as a prop so here we'll say add post equals and we pass this add post like this now inside of the post form we have access to that but we have to go here and we, we need to say props now we have access to the props so here when we get our response back let's remove this console log and instead we will say props oops props now we have that method we'll say add post we have that um, in our props we'll say add posts or post and we will pass it res.data which is that um, 
that post. Now this should call that and pass it that post and this will add it here and it will render again the component and then it will uh, be shown in our markup. So let's save all files. Uh, let's go back here, reload just in case. And I'll say new post should be added. And here I'll just put some gibberish. I'll click, uh, I'll click add. And there we go, it's been added right here. Cool, we don't have to reload and it instantly shows. All right, so what do we do now? Let's um, let's add here a limiter. I wanna add um, an input where if we put like five, we get only five and if we put any number, we get just that number of posts. So here in the home page, next to the form, I'll put another column, so dot .call. Dot, uh, I'll give this uh, S3 width, three out of 12. And here I'll put a paragraph, just say limit, uh, limit number of posts and uh, underneath here I'll put an input of type number and here I'll give it a um, value of limit which we haven't created yet but we will and then on change so each time it changes um, actually I can actually just put it here because it's uh, the logic is simple so it's going to take an event uh, so this is an arrow function and it's going to return uh, what it's going to do is going to use set limit We'll create this in a second. It's uh, using uh, use state and it it's going to set event dot target dot value and Here we'll um, Well, actually this is done. We need a button. So here we'll say button and Here this will have an on click. So I want so that when I click this uh, we actually reach to our server and get that number of posts. So we will say, I'll call this get number of posts. And um, yeah, we will give it a class name of, what is it, waves uh, effect and waves light and btn. And inside this button, it will just say, oops, I will just say set. Uh, let's create these, uh, these two, limit and set limit. So up here, I'll say const array destructuring limit and set limit equals use state and I'll give it an initial uh, value of five. So we need to create this get number of posts as well. Right, let's put it here. You can say const. I'm just varying up the syntax. Uh, usually I use the same syntax around just to show you that you can use both of them. So this doesn't take anything and does the following. So axios.get and here I'll put backticks and say slash posts. And now we need to put that number, which is okay, slash and put dollar sign curly brace and put this limit from here. So I'll say limit, this returns a promise. So I'll say dot then result. So when we get this result, we actually just, uh, we can just put this in one line and say set posts. And we just set it to this po uh, res.data as the dot catch error console dot error that error. All right, so let's save. Let me open the console. There's no errors, cool. Let's go to our page. So we get this limiter right here. Actually, let's give it that push in class as well. So here we add another class push dash in, save. Cool, it's pushed in. Now if I put three and click set, it should fetch only the latest three. So I'll click and there we go. If I put four, we get, uh, we get four. If I put a massive number, we get all of them. All right, so let's actually wire the edit button now. So let's go here. So the way we're gonna do this, um, from here when we click edit on any post, on any of these posts, we wanna again pass something to our post form. So we wanna pass that post so that we can fill these fields with the details of that post. So if we click here, it fills these fields um, with this title and, and body and we can edit and it will edit that post. So here, um, I'm gonna create another um, set of values or like state variables, so let's say const, and here I'll call it uh, editing post, and the setter for it, of course, will be set editing post, and it will be equals use state, and the initial value will have a title, that's an empty string, a body, that's an empty string, 
and you will have an ID as well. That's gonna be null. All right, so here, uh, once we click edit post, I wanna use this setter. So set editing post and just pass it this post that, that's that been created, uh, that's been clicked rather. But of course we need to pass it to the post form. So here we'll say uh, post form and we'll pass it editing uh, editing post, oops, post, and the value of it would, will be the editing post. All right, so here, oh, where's that button? Edit, we'll call edit post with that post, and then that will set editing post, and then that will change the value of this editing post to that post that's been created. And of course, it's passed to the post form, and since this is a prop, and the fact uh, when a prop changes, this component renders again, and then when it renders again, it will have those values. But we need to put those values actually in the inputs. So up here, we could uh, use use state at the beginning and set our values of the post to the uh, editing post from the props. But the problem with that approach is that if, if editing post changes, if you click a different one, it's not gonna set it again. So we need to use uh, use effect. So let's import it. So we'll use say use effect. And here we'll say, um, let's call it here. We'll say use effect. And the callback will be uh, that we just set post to the value of props dot and actually we can destructure values um, so that we don't have to say props each time so here instead of saying props we can use um, object destructuring and get add post from that and we can get as well editing post and wherever there is add post here props to add post instead we'll just say add post and is it anywhere else no it's just there so we remove that props from there and here we'll say set post to, so we remove props and say editing post. And here in the dependencies, let's pass it editing post. So now each time this prop changes, this use effect executes again. And by the way, you can have multiple use effect calls for different things. So don't think that you have to put all your logic inside of one use effect. And of course, more on this on my mini series on hooks, uh, if you want to learn more about this hook. All right, so now each time the editing post changes, the value of our um, input fields changes as well. And we have this ID that will be stored here uh, that we'll use to send a put request. So let's save everything and let's make sure this is working. So let's go to our app. So here, if we click edit right here, cool, it puts these fields up, up there. And if you wanna edit this one, click edit, it puts these fields right there, all right. Uh, let's change this so that when we're editing, it becomes update instead of add because it's uh, it's more appropriate. So I use a, I'll use a uh, simple trick here. So instead of add, we'll put a dynamic value, put a uh, JavaScript expression. And here I'll say post.id uh, uh, question mark. That means if this is truthy. So other, uh, if it's null, that means we're in add mode because we don't have an ID. And if we're in editing, this will have an ID and this will have an ID as well. So if the ID is the case, is truthy, that means we're updating, so we'll give it the value of update, else, so colon, we'll give it a value of add. Let's save and see if that's working. Uh, so if I click edit here, it becomes update. So, and otherwise it's add. All right, cool. Let's add the logic so, so that actually when we edit, it, it does actually edit that post. So here, we can leave everything as it is in the markup, but instead here in the on submit, we need to check if the uh, the ID is truthy. So let's cut all of this. We need to say if post.id, so if we have an ID, we'll know that we are in, ed in edit mode. So if we have an ID, we will do something else. If we don't have an ID, let's paste back that add um, logic. And here instead, actually I'll paste this, but instead of saying post, we'll say put, and this will go to, let's do backticks slash post slash, and we'll do here dollar sign curly brace, actually slash post slash, and dot ID like this, close the curly brace and close the backticks. So then when we get a result, uh, add it to our 
uh, to our array of posts in the home um, component. But uh, so this will work. This will edit the post. But this logic still um, of the add post is not uh, where it's not going to work properly because right now when we get that add post, actually let me demonstrate to you. It's going to edit it, but the, in the front end, it's not going to represent the data properly. So here, let's edit this. I'm going to remove this added word and notice what happens. So I'll remove this and say update. Okay, there's something wrong. Let me check. So code 502. Oh, actually, oh, silly me. I need to send the body of the request of the po put request and put that post there. All right, my bad. All right, let's go to our app, let's refresh. And here, if I say edit and remove this added and say update, it will actually add it here. It will get the data back, but it's actually been edited. If we refresh, it's it's here and the added was removed. The problem is that when we call add post here and we pass that return data, add post still adds it, even though this is an edit, we didn't add a new one. So let's fix this logic. So what I want to say here, I'll say if posts.find, so we'll look for it. If this post exists in our uh, in our current array, that means we, we just edited it and just replaced that one instead of adding a new one. So I'll say post where post.id uh, ID equals, so um, equals this post.id that we just received. So if this is truthy, that means this post exists. So I'll create a, a temporary variable called posts uh, updated. And this will be posts dot, um, or actually no, we need to get the index first. I'll say index equals posts dot find index of post where post dot ID equals post dot ID like this. And now that we have this index, we will uh, remove this post and add it again. So I'll say, uh, let's create that temporary variable now and say posts updated equals, and I'll just spread the existing posts. So array um, or just a spread operator and spread it into a new array and say posts updated uh, dot splice. And here we'll give it a start index. This will remove from this index this and then it will remove only one and then it will replace it with this post that we have and now we need to call set posts oops, set posts like this with this posts updated um, variable else so else if this post doesn't exist uh, in our array that means we added a new one we're just gonna paste uh, this logic that we had earlier all right so let's paste it here let's save everything and now if we go to our app so if we add a new post, so it's still add and we click here, it adds it. But if we edit an existing post, let's say I'm going to edit this. And instead of saying react here, I'm going to say react JS. Now it should only replace this one and not add a new one. So I'll click update and there we go. It became react JS. All right. Uh, one thing I want to add is form validation because right now our form, if there's no, um, nothing in the input and we click add, it just keeps loading and we get a server error that we shouldn't have um, empty fields. Okay, so let's do some client side validation. I'm gonna do a very basic um, validation. So I'm gonna create uh, another state variable. Uh, say const, oops, const, don't know what's wrong with the indentation, uh, errors and set errors. And this will say use state. And this is initially going to be an empty object. And here I'm going to create a separate function for validation. I'll say function, function, uh, validate form. It's not going to take anything. Here I'll say const. I'm not going to use set errors here because it's not going to update them synchronously. I'm just going to have a temporary variable called temp errors and set it to an empty error. And here I'll say if uh, post dot title dot um, trim to remove the white spaces equals an empty string. So if you have an empty value and we'll just say temp, oops, temps, uh, temp errors equals or not equals temp errors dot title. 
equals this value doesn't matter I'm just gonna say true just so that it's truthy or maybe actually I'll use it so I'll say here we'll have an error saying title must not be empty and here let's uh, copy this paste it one more time and here will be post body and here will be errors dot post body and it will say body must not be empty now here I'll say if object dot keys uh, of this uh, temp errors dot length so I want to check if we have any errors so if we have any keys inside of this object uh, that means the form is not valid so if it's more than zero then we want to say set oops set errors our actual errors array with this temp uh, temp errors and return false uh, else we just return true so here in the submit we're just gonna say uh, after we set loading we're gonna say if not validate form remember this uh, this validate form it will return false if our form is not valid so when we say if not validate form that means if the form is not valid we again set the loading to false and uh, we need to return we shouldn't continue with the rest of the code because the form is not valid now let's actually set our errors in the markup so here I'll put a span under the input I'll say span dot helper text which is a um, materialized CSS class and this will have the value of errors uh, errors dot title and here let's let's copy this one more time and put it under this input oops and this will have errors dot body and here we'll say actually for the class name we need to put a dynamic value so here we'll put a uh, an expression and say uh, if we have so errors dot title if we have errors dot title uh, if it has a value then I'll give it a or just do and and like this to give it if this is the case then give it the class of invalid when we give it invalid uh, this will appear and this will be just some red text under the input so I'll just copy this again paste it here and say if errors dot body then we give it inval invalid so that we can see this uh, red helper text all right let's save let's go to our form refresh make sure we don't have any error we don't need to refresh I don't know why I'm doing that all right so I'll click add and there we go we get our validation messages and if I fill this right here this error should be gone but this one remains and it doesn't send a uh, request to the server because we say return here I'm gonna say I don't know one two three four five I don't feel creative right now I'm just gonna say one two three four five now we shouldn't have any errors and you should send it and it does there we go no, no, this is not resetting uh, for some reason actually not for some reason there must be a reason <laughs> so uh, here uh, we can just say here when when we pass this and our form is valid we need to just reset our errors to um, empty so we can just say here we can just call set errors to an empty object because we passed this and that means that our form is valid so let's go again let's try to reproduce that so if we put stuff here and we have an error and we put some more stuff here and we add there we go it resets that error is gone all right so this is it for this uh, tutorial um, if you want to dive more into react uh, I have a react series where we use multiple libraries and we make a project that's more advanced than this and uh, yeah that's it for this video if you guys like this if you learned a bit from this like if you love this type of content subscribe and I've created a patreon page for for the channel so if you want to support me over there it would mean the world for me thank you very much and I hope to see you soon bye